students, this is Mrs. Mercado speaking. I hope all of you are doing well. Um, we are reaching um, the end of the semester, so we have just a couple of more weeks to go. Um, this particular lecture is going to be covering chapter 24, which deals with differential analysis and product pricing. Now, uh, for this particular, um, let me get my piece of paper over here, guys. Uh, for this particular chapter, you are looking at one, two, three, four, and five homework problems. Now, two of those homework problems that you're going to have on chapter 24, you're going to see something very similar to that on your final exam. I am going to go over both of those problems that you're going to be seeing on your final. That way you have uh, my lecture, you have an example, you get to practice it on your homework, and then if you have any questions, um, you let me know. Um, I've been getting a lot of positive feedback uh, from several students that um, these videos are helpful to them. I'm glad they are. I know they're a little bit long, uh, but you don't have to listen to the whole video at once. Maybe do one problem, you know, pause it or close it down, and then you can continue later. Reopen the, the video and continue, okay? Um, they are a little bit long because accounting, it takes time to explain, and that's because I'm not going ev over every single problem um, because it is quite uh, time consuming. Now, I went through Cengage, and all of the problems for Chapter 24 do have a Show Me How video. Um, there's a lot of examples in your ebook. Uh, make sure that you use all of the resources. I'm a resource. I'm here. Um, you can reach out to me. Um, I, I was informed that there is online tutoring as well. If you want to schedule an online tutoring center with the CLE lab, you can do that as well. Um, STC is just trying to accommodate as much as we can um, due to this unforeseen circumstance to where all of our classes had to transition to an online environment. Um, for the most part, uh, my online classes continue to do wonderful um, since you know uh, my online classes were accustomed to the online environment as well. Uh, my uh, traditional students um, that had to be transferred to an online environment are keeping up. Um, they're communicating with me. I really appreciate it. Um, and just whoever, you know, if whatever class you're in, whether you're in my online or my traditional, if you have questions, please, please um, let me know. Um, that is what I'm here for. Um, this week, we are in week number 14, which is going to run from April the 20th through April the 26th. Now, very important announcement, Monday, April the 20th, is the last day to withdraw. So please make sure that you review your standing and your courses um, and identify if there's anything, um, if there's any course that you need to withdraw because that is the last day to drop. That is Monday, April the 20th. That information can be found on your Blackboard as well as your syllabus, okay? Um, also, just a side note, uh, during week 14, you are going to have an extra credit uh, assignment in Cengage, which is optional. Um, that is intended to help students that are struggling, that need a couple of points to get to that next level. Um, that extra credit assignment, like I said, is optional. You don't have to complete it, but I highly encourage that you do if you do need those extra points. That is going to be the last um, extra credit opportunity that you are going to have in the semester. Um, if you look at your or review your grade book and uh, you don't know where you stand, you want some feedback from me, um, you want to discuss anything, just you know communicate with me, whether it be through Blackboard messages, through Pronto, through email, through a text message, through a phone call. I am here to help you, okay? Now, um, I don't want students to come the last day of class and say, Miss, what can I do? At that point, we can't do anything, guys. We can do, um, or I can try to help you as much as I can right now, okay, before the semester ends, okay? So make sure that, you know, if, if review your grade book. Hey, you know, maybe I missed this, maybe I missed that. Talk to me, Miss, what can, what can I do, okay? I'll look at your grade and say, okay, this is where you stand. This is how many points you need to pass with at least a C or whatever your desired grade is. And we can work something out before the end of the semester, okay? As soon as finals come, finals will be administered. I issue out grades, whether you pass or you didn't pass. Now, I've been trying to get a hold of some students that have not been participating in my class. I've been sending them messages. 
um, some of these students do not have phone numbers um, listed on their, um, I guess their file that I go in there and check. Uh, so it's kind of, it's been kind of difficult for me to get a hold of these students. Um, if you are a student that is not participating, has not been participating, please ensure to complete the withdrawal process because if not, I am going to issue the grade that has been earned and that can be an F and that can impact your financial aid and your GPA. Okay, so just I'm all I'm asking is very important. Review your standing in the course. Um, if you have questions about where you stand, communicate with me because the last day to withdraw is Monday, April the 20th, 2020. Okay, so we can now jump in into chapter 24. Um, just another general announcement make sure that we do stay safe. Um, it seems that things are calming down here in the valley. I hope that we are able to return to our normality soon. I am anxious to go right back um, to STC, you know, seeing my students, seeing all of those students in the hallways, um, just returning to normality. Um, you know, I miss it. I know my children that are here at home, they've been here in quarantine for um, since the week of spring break, um, are anxious to get out of my house. Um, they're going crazy on me, uh, but it's for the safety of everyone. Um, and hopefully, you know, we don't have, we have less casualties here in the valley and we are able to overcome this okay so let us get let's get started now this week um like i mentioned we are going to have two one two three four five problems i'm going to go over three of those problems two of those problems you're going to see on your test okay so the first problem is 24 7. um this is going to be on your test okay you're going to have something similar to this on your test okay now, I've set up the problem here. This is where I'm going to be filling it out. This is the problem from your book. And then I have some uh, uh, just notes down here. So let's start off with the exercise. This is exercise 24-7. Okay. So this is a make or buy decision. Okay. Please make sure that you read the chapter before you attempt any of your assignments. Okay. I am not going to be reading the chapter for you read the chapter, review the PowerPoints that I've uploaded into uh, Blackboard, and then listen to my lecture, okay? Uh, and then complete your assignments, okay? Very important that you read, okay? So, here we have exercise 24-7, make or buy decision, okay? So it says, Fremont Computer Company has been purchasing carrying cases for its portable computers at a purchase price of $40 per unit. Okay. The company, which is currently operating below full capacity, charges factory overhead to production at the rate of 25% of direct labor costs. The unit costs to produce comparable carrying cases are expected to be as follows. We have direct materials of $16, direct labor of $20, Factory overhead, which is 25% of direct labor at $5, and our total cost per unit of $41. Now, if Freeman Computer Company manufactures uh, the carrying cases, fixed factory overhead costs will not increase, and variable factory overhead costs associated with the cases are expected to be 5% of the direct labor costs. So this is a little bit confusing. What they're telling you here is if you decide to manufacture your own carry the your own carrying cases you're going to incur um, a variable factory overhead cost okay uh, but you're still going to have whether you buy or you manufacture you're going to have a fixed factory overhead cost okay so the fixed factory overhead cost is going to get uh, incurred whether either you decide to, to purchase uh, from another supplier or if you want to manufacture fixed factory uh, fact, fixed factory overhead is going to be constant for both scenarios. But if you do go with the option of making your own cases, you are going to incur a variable factory overhead cost associated, and it's expected to be 5% of direct labor costs. Okay? So the first requirement that we have here is to prepare a differential analysis dated September 30th to determine whether the company should either make alternative one which is to make the case, or alternative two, which is to buy the case. Okay, so we have to decide which one is our better option. Should we buy it from an outside vendor, 
or should we make our own cases? We have the capacity to do that as well, okay? So we need to figure that out. Now, um, I went and I cut a piece of your chapter 24 uh, that speaks about make or buy. Um, that particular section is about two, three pages long. I'm not gonna go over all of it. This is just um, introductory to that make or buy section. So it basically says, companies often manufacture products made up of components that are assembled into a final product. For example, an automobile manufacturer assembles tires, radios, motors, interior seats, transmissions, and other parts into a finished automobile. In such cases, the manufacturer must decide whether to make the part or purchase it from a supplier. Differential analysis can be used to decide whether to make or buy a part. The analysis is similar whether management is considering making a part that is currently being purchased or purchasing a part that is currently being made. Okay? Um, I used to work in a maquila long time ago, um, TRW, um, and uh, they would manufacture different um, auto parts, you know, seat belts, dashboards, um, different um, automobile components for different companies, um, you know, Chevrolet, Jaguar, BMW, you know, they had a whole bunch of, of, of different people they would supply with a variety of, of parts, uh, you know, AC uh, filters, a whole bunch of things, okay? So um, we would manufacture for these big automobile companies and then they, they would put them. Now, what I, I remember when I was working there, sometimes they would get a recall, something that we manufactured failed, um, maybe a seat belt. I know we had a major recall on seat belts. Um, so we had to take ownership. We provided those seat belts to Chevy or to, you know, Jaguar or whatever, whoever we sold them to. If those were defective units that we provided at TRW, we had to, you know, replace them um, and provide, um, you know, compensation so they could be reinstalled and fixed, okay? So, companies make a decision. Can we make the product that we need or should we just buy it from someone else outside? Okay, we shouldn't deal with it. So, this is a decision that we have to make here, whether to make it or to buy it. Hmm, okay. So let's look at our first alternative, okay? The first alternative is to make the carrying case. And I'm gonna be working down, okay? That way we can just get one done at a time, okay? So the first one is if you make a case, okay? Are we gonna be selling these cases to the public? No, they're for internal use, okay? They're not gonna be sold, okay? It's a carrying case that's included with the computer okay so purchase price now the sales price is if you were to sell it what would you be selling it at we're not interested in selling it okay now the unit cost these are costs this is an outflow because you're paying for this your costs need to be in negative very important because sometimes students just put the numbers um, and the system counts them incorrect, even though they're the correct numbers. Co the costs need to be entered with minus sign, okay? So, purchase price. Am I gonna buy this case from someone else? No, I'm not gonna buy it, I'm gonna make it. So my purchase price is zero, okay? Direct materials, okay? If I make my case, I'm gonna spend $16 in material. So that's gonna be negative 16. How about label? If I make them, I'm gonna spend $20 on label. These all of them are negative because they're cost. Now this is a little bit confusing. Let me put a little bit of um, right there. Okay, um, variable factory overhead. Now let's look over here at the problem. It says here, fixed factory overhead costs will not increase and variable factory overhead costs associated with the cases are expected to be 5% of the labor uh, cost. So my labor cost is $20. So I'm gonna put here a little parenthesis. Let me, let me just, I don't fit in my desk. Okay, here we go. One parenthesis, okay? And I'm gonna show you the calculation down here. So to calculate my variable factory overhead, I'm gonna get my $20, which are my direct labor. Okay. 
all that. There we go. Direct labor. And I'm going to multiply it by the 5%. Okay, right there. And that's going to give me... Let me get my calculator out. Calculator. So it's $20 times 5%. That's going to give me a dollar. Okay. So my variable factory overhead cost is going to be a dollar. Okay. Now, let's look um, at the fixed factory overhead. Okay. Now, your factory overhead here includes your fixed your fixed and your variable okay so we have to split it amongst the two okay so this is your total factory overhead well i already figured out that my variable overhead is a dollar my total overhead is five so i can figure out my fixed overhead by just subtracting okay so let me do here two little asterisks okay. so i know that my Factory overhead is five dollars, so this is five dollars, and I'm gonna put here factory overhead, and I'm gonna subtract one dollar because that is my variable overhead. So that means that my fixed overhead is four dollars. Okay. So we know that the total overhead is five. We already figured out that one dollar is your variable. So that means that $4 is my fixed, okay? So then that's gonna be $4 minus, okay? So now I'm just gonna add all of that column down, okay, for my costs. And that's gonna give me negative 41, okay? Now let's look at alternative two, which is what happens if you buy the case from a supplier, okay? Sales price, are we gonna be selling these cases? No, we're not. Now purchase price, okay, sorry. Your purchase price, how much are you paying for this a case if you buy it from a supplier? It says here that if you buy the case, you're gonna pay $40 for it, okay? So the purchase price for this case is gonna be negative 40 because it's a cost, you're paying for the case, okay? We are not gonna have any materials, we're not gonna have any labor, we're not gonna have any variable, but we are going to have fixed. Okay, we have fixed overhead to be able to bring in those uh, cases over and process them together or bundle them, bundle them up with our computers. Okay, so we're going to have the fixed factory overhead of $4. So we're going to add that column together for my cost section. That's going to give me negative $44. So now we're going to get the difference. Now I went ahead and I went and put here, the difference is going to be your alternative 2 minus your alternative 1, okay? It's going to be equals alternative 2 minus alternative 1, okay? So once again, equals your alternative 2, which is your negative 40, minus your alternative 1, okay? You're going to run those calculations all the way down. So here is the completed differential analysis. Okay. Requirement A says prepare a differential analysis as of September 30th. Comparing alternative one and alternative two. Okay. Now requirements B, C, I'm sorry, requirement B states on the basis of the data presented, would it be advisable to make the carrying cases or to continue buying them? Explain. So now we've got the data, now we need to make a decision. Do we continue to buy them from a supplier or we should we make them in-house? What are they asking? On the basis of the data presented, would it be advisable to make the carrying cases or to continue buying them? Explain. Okay. 
Okay? So, assuming there are no better uses for the spur capacity, okay? The carrying cases should be either manufactured or purchased. Let's look at this. Should we manufacture the cases? If we manufacture, we're going to spend $41. If we buy, we're going to spend $44. So which one's the lower cost? The lower cost is $41. So I would opt to manufacture the cases. Okay? Um, since the cost per unit would be decreased and the amount and it says enter the amount as a positive number when the amount represents an increase or a decrease okay so the carrying cases should be manufactured since the cost per unit would decrease by three dollars okay and it's going to be decreased by three dollars by doing so the fixed factory overhead is relevant well the fixed factory overhead is not really relevant because both of them have it okay it's irrelevant the fixed factory overhead whether you manufacture or you buy the case is irrelevant okay whether you you know either one option or the other you're still going to incur those four dollars of fixed factory overhead okay so let's read over this so assuming that there are no better uses for the spare capacity, the carrying cases should be manufactured since the cost per unit would decrease by $3. Okay? By doing so, the fixed factory overhead is irrelevant because both of the scenarios or alternatives included to the decision. Okay? So that is the first problem. So first figure out your cost for alternative one, cost for alternative two, then get the difference. To get the difference, it's always your alternative two minus your alternative one. And that will give you your differential impact. Okay. Okay, okay. So now we're gonna move. You're gonna see something like this on your test. Make sure that you understand where we're getting all of these numbers. Okay? And all of these numbers are coming from the actual problem. It's just knowing where to plug them in. This one is a little bit different. Here we have to make a decision whether we are going to replace an, an existing piece of equipment. So it says, a company is considering replacing an old piece of machinery which costs $600,000 and has $350,000 of accumulated depreciation to date with a new machine that has a purchase price of $545,000. The old machine could be sold for $231,000. The annual variable production cost associated with the old machine is estimated to be $61,000 per year for eight years. Okay. The annual variable production cost for the new machine is estimated to be $19,000 per year for eight years. A significant difference. One is at 61,000 a year, the other one's at 19,000 per year for eight years, okay? Requirement eight. Prepare a differential analysis dated September the 13th to determine, to, to determine whether to continue with alternative one or replace alternative two, the old machine, okay? That is requirement one. Now before we go run, uh, before we jump into the requirement, there's a section on your ebook that talks about replacement equipment. Make sure that you read through that information. Okay. That says the usefulness of fixed assets may decrease before it is worn out. For example, old equipment may no longer be as efficient as new equipment. Differential analysis can be used for decisions to replace fixed assets such as equipment and machinery. The analysis normally focuses on the cost of continuing to use the old equipment versus replacing the equipment. The book value of the old equipment is a sunk cost and thus it is irrelevant. Okay. 
So now let's figure out what's going on. Okay. So we have two options. Do we continue with the machine that we have right now? Or do we replace it and get a new machine? Okay. What's the best option for us? So let's do, do the first um, alternative. If you continue with the old machine, are you going to have any revenues from selling the machine? Well, no. You're not going to have any revenues because you're not going to sell it. You're going to keep it. Now we have the cost. Remember, costs need to be entered with a minus sign or a parenthesis. Okay? Next we have the purchase price. Okay? Well, we haven't purchased it right now. Okay? That is not an, a current cost. So my purchase price would be zero. Now we have our variable production costs for eight years. Now let's look at the problem. It says here that the annual variable production cost associated with the old machine is estimated to be 61,000 per year for eight years. Okay, so let me little, put a little asterisk out here so we know our calculation. Let me just get my, there we go. So how are we going to do that? Oh, sorry about that. So, how are we going to do that? So, my variable production cost for eight years, it's going to say, it says here that for, if we decide to keep the old machine, the estimated to be 61000 for the first, for the, for the next eight years. So, I know it's $61,000. And then how many years is it going to be good for? It's going to be good for eight years. So that will be negative 488. And remember, it's a cost, so it's negative. Okay. So now we're going to figure out our income or loss. We're going to add. Uh, it's our payment minus our cost. Well, the only thing I have right now is one cost of 488. Okay, so now we're going to do option two, which is to replace the old machine. Okay, so if you replace the old machine, are you going to have any revenues, any proceeds from the sale of the old machine? Okay. So let's see what it says. Um, okay. So second option says proceeds from sale of machine the old machine could be sold for two hundred and thirty one thousand dollars so we're going to make 231 of the sale okay then we have the purchase price how much did we pay for this machine when we bought it new well we paid five hundred and forty five thousand My variable production cost, according to the problem, it says that the annual variable, variable production cost associated with the old machine is estimated to be 61000 for eight years. Okay, The annual variable production cost for the new machine is estimated at 19000 Okay, So we're going to replace the old machine. We're going to get a new one. Then our variable production cost is 19000 per year. Okay, so let me, right here, I'm going to do uh, 19,000 times 8 years. Let me put the 
dollar amount. This is 488. And then the other one is going to be Okay. So my variable cost production for eight years is going to be 19,000 times eight years. That's going to give me $152,000. And then we can add our proceeds plus our cost that we have. And that gets me $466,000 lots. So now we're going to do with the, the differential effect of the income on alternative 2. So we're going to compare alternative 2 with alternative 1. Okay. So we just subtract alternative 2 from 1. Okay. And then I, since I am using Excel, I'm just going to copy that down. Okay. So, this is your completed um, differential analysis for alternative 1 and alternative 2. Okay. So, if we compare here, if you continue uh, with the old machine, you're going to have a loss of 488. If you replace it with a new machine, you're going to have a loss of 440, 466. I'm sorry. So, a difference of $22,000. Okay, requirement B. What is the sunk cost in this situation? Let me put that here. Requirement. Requirement B. Okay. So, what is the sunk cost in this situation? The sunk cost is the $250,000 book value, which is the $600,000 cost less the $350,000 on accumulated depreciation. Depreciation of the present machine. So the set cost is a two the two twenty five thousand dollar. I'm missing a zero. Let me see. Two hundred. Yeah, I'm missing a zero. It should be two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let me put a little comma because then I get my numbers mixed up. Okay. So the set cost. Oh, I put I put the comma in the wrong spot. Okay. So the set cost is a. Oh my lord! Put the wrong thing. What is wrong with me? Okay. Okay. The set cost is a $250,000 book value, which is your set $600,000 cost less the $350,000 accumulated depreciation of the present machine. Okay. So, what is the sunk cost? The sunk cost is just basically the value, how much you pay for that particular asset, less it less its accumulated depreciation. This particular problem, you're going to have something similar to that on your test. Okay. So this is the last problem.
problem that I'm going to be covering over today. This deals with differential analysis for sales promotion proposal. Okay. So it says, Kankakee Cosmetics Company is planning a one-month campaign for December to produce sales of one of its two cosmetic products. A total of 150000 has been budgeted for advertising, uh, contests, redeemable um, coupons, and other promotional budgets. The following data have been assembled for their possible usefulness in deciding which of the products to select for that campaign. Then they give you a chart with information for the moisturizer and the perfume. So, no increases in facilities would be necessary to produce and sell the increased output. It is anticipated that 40,000 additional units of moisturizer or 30,000 additional units of perfume could be sold from the campaign without changing the unit selling price or the entire product. Okay. Instructions, number one. Prepare a differential analysis on November the 2nd to determine whether to promote the moisturizer, alternative one, or the perfume, uh, alternative two. So this is very useful. Sometimes you see bargains out in the store. Um, and, and, you know, these are some of the things, you know, they have to make a decision. But what should we aim or target of selling most? Is it the moisturizer? Is it the perfume? What are people following or needing right now? So let's start with the problem. Okay. So here we have a differential analysis uh, for the uh, pr to promote moisturizer or to promote perfume um, as of November the second. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with our revenue. This is for the moisturizer. Okay. Now, if you notice, all of the amounts are not given. You have to calculate some of them. Okay. Okay, so let's start off with our revenue, um, and I'm going to go once again down. I'm going to start with my moisturizer, okay, the revenue. The revenue is going to be, pay close attention, and I'm just going to put it in the formula. The revenue is going to be the $35, sorry, the $35 unit selling price times the number of units that we're going to be selling for the moisturizer. And it says here that we are anticipating selling 40,000 additional units of the moisturizer. And that's going to give you $1.4 million. Okay. So I'm just going to put here for your reference, I'm going to put here unit selling price times, and then that's going to be uh, number of units. So that is how I got my revenue. The unit selling price, which is $35, times your perfume, I'm sorry, uh, times your $40,000 output um, of units, $40,000, okay? So I'm just going to put here $35 times 40,000. Okay. Now we're going to go to costs. Okay, I'm going to put a comment here. Costs. All costs need to be negative. Okay, very important. To be negative when you're entering your cost. Okay, so let's start off with direct materials. Okay, direct materials we spend twelve dollars per moisturizer, so it's going to be twelve dollars. My computer would work. Okay, it's twelve dollars, and we're going to be manufacturing forty thousand uh, moisturizers. Okay? So that's going to give me four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Okay, so I'm going to put here 
times 40,000 units. Direct labor. Labor is $8, okay? So we're gonna do $8. And we have 40,000 units. I'm sorry about that. That is correct. Oh, I messed up. I oh, know. There it is. Okay. So my direct labor is eight dollars times forty thousand units. Let me get my calculator. Eight times forty thousand. That'll be three hundred and twenty thousand. Remember, it needs to be negative because this is cost. Okay. Factory, variable factory overhead. Okay. Variable factory overhead. Variable, is it variable? Yeah. Variable factory overhead. So we have three, uh, three dollars times 40. It's going to be a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. It's going to be negative a hundred and twenty. And we've got the variable overhead by multiplying the variable factory overhead rate of three dollars times forty thousand units. And that's gonna give me negative one twenty. Variable selling expenses. Okay. Variable selling expenses. Okay. So my variable selling expenses, variable factory selling expenses is two dollars. So we're gonna do two dollars. Times forty thousand. So that should be forty one two three times two eighty thousand dollars. And remember they're all negative numbers because it's the cost. Sales promotion. It says here, sales promotion. It says here that Kankiki Cosmetic is planning a one month campaign for December to promote one of its two cosmetic products. A total of $150 has been budgeting for advertising, contests, redeemable coupons, and other promotional items. So my sales promotion is going to be a hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. That is given to you. Not governed, but given. Okay. 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 So that was given at a hundred and fifty thousand right here. Now I can figure out my income or my loss. How do we do that? Well, it's gonna be your revenue. And then backspace plus, let me see if this works. The sum of all of your costs. And that's gonna give me Nope, that did not work. That's too big. So it's negative, 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 negative. Oh, this one needs to be positive, negative, the materials. Okay. Okay, so once again, I'm going to do my 1 million plus. And then I'm going to do the sum of all of my costs. And that's going to give me $250,000. So because it is positive, I have income. 
Okay, so we have our revenue minus our expenses to get income or loss. Okay, so let me make a note here. This is your revenue minus your cost. same thing for alternative two. In this case, um, they're wanting us to promote the perfume instead of the lotion. Okay. So now we need to run the number so we can do a comparison. Okay. So my revenue, same calculations. Okay. Your revenue is going to be your selling price for the perfume, which is fifty-five dollars, times. How many perfumes are we manufacturing? It says here that we are manufacturing uh, 30,000 30, additional units of perfume. So 30,000 30,000 units, I'm sorry. So my revenue is gonna be a million six fifty. Okay. Now we going to have all of the expenses. And it's basically the same thing, all we're doing is changing the column information from moisturizers to perfumes. No? Now we're looking at this section right here. Now we're focusing on that one section. Okay. So, direct material. No, yeah, direct materials we're going to start off with. Okay? My direct materials is $20, okay? And we are going to be, it says here, we're gonna be producing an extra $40,000, 40,000 units of the moisturizer. So we're gonna multiply by 40,000 units. Oh my God. Forgot my equal sign. So that will be eight. I'm sorry. I said materials is twenty dollars, and we are manufacturing. Oh, it's thirty thousand, not forty. You see a simple mistake and throw us off. Okay, so it will be six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of the variables here. We have um, labor. Labor is at ten dollars a piece, and we are going to manufacture um, thirty thousand units. So that's going to give me three hundred thousand dollars. Now we have variable factory overhead. Variable. Okay. A variable factory overhead is six dollars. I'm gonna multiply. Times the number of units that we're making, which is thirty thousand. That'll give me a hundred and eight. And all of these should be negative. Sorry about that. Remember, all of your costs need to be negative. Your variable selling expenses is right here at three dollars. Okay. And I'm going to multiply by the thirty thousand units. I don't know what's wrong with me. Here we go. And that's going to give me why does it not fix it? So it'll be 3 times 30,000. That'll be 90,000. And it has to be with the minus sign. The last item I have is sales promotion. And it says regardless if you go with option one or option two, you're planning on spending $150,000. So 
So that is constant for both options. Okay. Now we're going to get our total. That's going to be the revenue minus the sum of these right here. And then we close parentheses. Oh, let me see. Hmm. Let me see if I have all my numbers right. It's a million six fifty negative six. Oh, that number is huge. That should be negative three hundred thousand, not that big number. Okay, so it should be three hundred thousand, one eighty, ninety and 150 and they're all negative okay so once again i get my revenue let me get my calculator out so you can see my revenue is a million six fifty and i'm going to subtract all of my expenses And we get the three hundred and thirty thousand okay. dollars. So now we can just do a difference. Remember, the difference is alternative two minus alternative one. Okay, equals alternative two minus alternative one. Okay, and once you have that, and the little box is going to show, you can just drag down, and it'll give you um, all of the calculations automatically. So here we have um, the two products. We have the moisturizer and the, um, the perfume. And we need to figure out what was our best option, okay? So requirement one is satisfied. It says prepare a differential analysis, which we did. Determine whether to promote the, the moisturizer or the perfume. So let's look at our income. Which one gives me greater income? My perfume gives me 330 versus the other one, this is the moisturizer, it gives me 250. So if I had to make a decision, I would select to move forward with the perfume. Sorry about that, where did I leave my file? Okay. So I would uh, promote the perfume. Why? Because it yields a higher income. Requirement two. The sales manager has tentatively decided to promote to promote moisturizer, estimating that the operating income would even be increased by fifty thousand. Uh, this is a five dollar operating income per unit for forty thousand. Um, less the promotion expenses of 150000 Okay, The manager also believes that the selection of perfumes would reduce operating um, income by $90,000 to manager, um, to operating income per unit for $3,000. i am sorry, where, where was I? Okay, let me start all over. The sales manager had tentatively decided to promote moisturizer, estimating that the operating income would be increased by $50,000. By, by $50, $5 operating income per unit for $40,000, less the promotion expenses of $150,000. The manager also believed that the selection of perfume would reduce operating income by $90,000, $2 operating income per unit of 30,000 units, less promotion expenses of $150,000. State briefly your reasons for supporting or opposing the tentative decision. Okay. So let's fill in the blank right there, okay? So we had to, in this particular problem, compare whether to um, choose one product over the other in case here we have the moisturizer versus the perfume. Which one's a better outcome for our company during these times? Okay, what do we think or anticipate we're gonna be selling the most? Okay. 
The sales manager had tentatively decided to promote the moisturizer that it, um, operating income will in, be increased by 50000 The manager also believed that the selection of perfume will reduce operating income by 90000 State briefly your reasons for support for supporting or opposing the tentative decision. Okay. So this is our opinion. The sales manager's tentative decision should be opposed. Manager erroneously considered the full unit cost instead of the differential. additional revenue this is the um, additional um, uh, what did I write down let me see the sales manager's tentative decision should be opposed the sales manager erroneously considered the full unit of the full unit cost instead of the differential. This is um, the additional revenue. And I misspelled revenue. Revenue. This is the original de uh, revenue and differential. So the additional cost. the differential analysis it can be observed that the perfume yields a higher income than the moisturizer here um, why are we opposing this tentative decision well the size manager's tentative decision should be opposed why because he erroneously considered the full unit the full unit cost instead of the differentiation he didn't take into account he's just looking okay my total cost to manufacture a moisturizer is $29 versus my perfume it's a lot more expensive $53 Yes, even though the moisturizer is cheaper to produce or manufacture than the perfume, um, we have a problem here because um, the perfume is doing pretty well. They're selling uh, about 30,000 units uh, versus 40,000 for the moisturizer. So um, just by looking at this information here, we can make a determination um, that we are not, um, we are opposing the decision by management. Okay? So this is a completed problem. Okay. Um, the first two problems, like I said, 24-7, which deals with make or buy decision, and 24-9, which deals with machine replacement decisions, you're going to see those on your homework and you're going to see those on your test. Please review, please practice. If you have any questions, please do not um, hesitate to reach out to me. I also want to take the opportunity to um, ask, kindly ask all students, Registration is open for both the spring and the fall semester. 
If you are needing any classes, please register as soon as possible. That way you can get the best selection. Okay. Um, until next time, have a great day.